Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? I was hoping to start up on here, but now we're going in. Can you guys hear me? Bonjour, bonjour. Hi, Carol. I'm losing my voice. It's actually better today, but uh, I'll let the view speak for itself a little bit. But look at is this suspense telling you? Is this exciting? I came yesterday to make sure I just would work, and they were doing it. Oh, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Probably doesn't want her bum on the World Wide Web. Can you see where we're going? So oh, today, this weekend is Patrimon weekend. So because of that, all of these special things are open. I find a spot to squish into here. And they have something really cool up here on the front of Notre Dame. We put this little thing together, but this is the best part. And I'll squish, oh wait, there's a spot. Oh, don't. Here we are. Look at this. There's a little pipe here. So they built this little stage up here so we could come in and see something we haven't seen since eight before April 15th, 2019. There she is. So you can see into. I think I'm. I think I'm in safe driving mode. I'm not even moving. Um, can you guys hear me okay? I think they want to move me right down now. But they opened this this weekend. They can see in here. And they just announced today that um, the retrofitting it, getting it ready to begin is finished and that it will be done by 2024. I'm not sure what's going on with these sad little trees in here. And we can't see the parve anymore. And we can't see the Pont Zero. But we can see her. So you can see all the work they have done in front and the wall covering her. Uh, but she looks pretty good though from this side. No trying to crawl in here, breaking in. I was very excited yesterday to see this much, but they said that uh, they announced yesterday that uh, it will be ready. The plan is April 16th, 2024. They will hold their first mass in here. So it'll be a year and a day um, or three, five years, five years and a day since the fire, 2024. So that would be before the Olympics. So I don't think they're gonna have the roof fixed, but they'll have it in place, something in place enough that it is safe for people to go inside, which will be really exciting. So I will be here for that for sure. This is Charlemagne over there. On the top of the Pantheon, just a little farther. The leaves are everything returning a lot the last few days. <coughs> but they built this is a they did this little um, demonstration the other day of basically how they built this. These are the the different. Uh, braces that they built, custom built to put under all of these flying buttresses. And they're pretty amazing. And you can see how they put them in um, and they put all these like little wedges. Don, our, our resident, Don and Ron Lilly, our resident woodworkers, probably know all about that kind of stuff. Okay. 
was supposed to rain all day today and it has not yet. Now it keeps saying maybe more like 10 p.m. tonight. So it uh, looks like it's holding off. So it's holding off for this, which I'm happy about. But so out here, it's really cool. I'll show you some of this stuff. So they have all these little tents set up with demonstrations of how they're saving everything. <laughs> so these are like the guys that saved all the statues from the top. They had something kind of like this a couple of years, two years ago at the Palais Royale. They have a loudspeaker and you guys probably can't hear them. And then we have somebody, the sculpture restores. Look at these. With the uh, okay, kids. I think this is the same. This is the same guy as our last time. Oh, and there's the rooster. Did you notice I'm just showing you guys all the Frenchmen? <laughs> There's the organ. The guys fixing the organ. They've already taken all of the tyke and all of it out, and it said that they are already um, working on it. These are people restoring the paintings. See like a squish in here. Okay, this closes pretty soon, um, six o'clock. So these are like the archaeologists because they took apart all of the stone. See the place. You guys even. Here's the. They'd taken, um, and you can see one, I think over here, they had a pile of the stones. Can you kind of see them in there? They had some of the, those are some of the stones that came down from the ceiling when the roof collapsed. And they saved every single one of them. And that's the age of the stones. So that's how they're able to figure out which stone, how long they've been there is because of the going down to the 10th century. 
You just see the bunch of the stones right there. So the stone that's kind of sticking up with the dark on it. That was one of the um, faults. I know so. some of you, Roxanne, you probably understand. You could probably hear him and understand him. Look at this. That was the roof. Oh, that's right where it looks at this. That's where that is that one cross that was hanging off the edge. Oh, this is so cool. And they even have a display, and I'm not going to do it. You could actually, you could actually go and uh, they'll put a harness on you, and you could do what the scaffolding guys did and uh, descend down that little catwalk thing we were on, and I will not be doing that. To see on the video back there, you can see where they were kind of categorizing all of the stones that came down. Oh, look up, where's a stone over there? Oh, here's how they're putting it back together. <laughs> Trying to find a way in here. See that? So those are like little cutouts of all the stones they found. You look on the screen, it has it like R42, R44. Oh my God, it's amazing. You guys see that? This is a young guy. That makes me hopeful for the future. <laughs> Excuse me. How cool is that? Like, how do they even figure out which stone is from which place? It's just amazing, amazing to me. Hi, Carol. They have this magazine um, that if you donate, you could get, but I bought it, I found it in one of the, in my favorite Boosty News. And um, I'll go through it and share it with you guys. It's all about all the early steps so far about um, in the restoration and what they're doing. It was 40,000 pieces of scaffolding that were there when it, the fire happened and they were all removed. So that's that whole middle part. And so now you can see where it's like all like covered along the way. They've just closed up the rose windows on both sides. 
and then that built that whole top over it. Like that's a that's awesome. So, but it's pretty cool that there are they're ready now to start the renovation. Oh, and look at this. Can I have those, please? Can I please have those drawings? Look at that one over there. Can you see that one? I need those, please. And these books. Can I have all these books? Oh, look at that poor little puppy. He's never quite happy. I need those books. Oh, there's my hero sitting in the middle on that big picture in the very front. He is the architect that's saving it. I just want to hang out with those ladies. See, there's the thing. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's not very high, but uh, it's not even the height that would scare me. But yeah, I don't think so. The carpenters. I haven't made it over yet to the um, the architecture museum yet to see all of the refinished um, statues from the top. They're all finished and they're all um, back to their original colors. They're like basically like dark, dark, almost black. Um, so I will go see those. I don't have a lot of time this week because I have so many tours, but I will go see them soon. This little time lapse video. And how they did it. These are the these are those guys that were scaling up and down the scaffolding. <coughs> oh, here we could do some knot tying. I bet Carol. I bet Carol the Don knows all about that. He's probably very handy. He was probably a Boy Scout. So I think there. Yeah, so here she is. It's very exciting. You could normally walk up to here now anyway. Um, they opened all this up and you could go down into the crypt, which is really cool. They have an exhibit right now about Ville Le Duc and Victor Hugo and about um, the book and then about what Ville Le Duc did and how he saved it. Look at that sky, it's perfect. It's a beautiful day. It's a little, uh, it's not as muggy the last couple of days, which has been a very nice change. And my voice is better today too. Yesterday and the day before it was pretty bad. And the boys at Avant Comtois are making fun of me because I just was basically squeaking. So they just were laughing. But Sylvain took care of me, got me some honey. And tea. <coughs> and now as soon as I say that, I start coughing. Right. Looks pretty good from this side. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> of course. And here, out here. <coughs> I don't think we could see. <coughs> Hang on, I gotta get some water. So oh, here's one, right where this guy's standing. I'll show you in a second. Oh. It's kind of hard to open a bottle bottle. Sir, move off it. <coughs> So right here where his foot is, it's one of the markers, it says St. Catherine. And they are markers all the way down because this whole, 
area used to be covered with, um, <coughs> sorry guys, small chapels and uh, lots of uh, little streets. So this is kind of where the St. Catherine Chapel was, but they're very small. Nothing like this, of course. But uh, before Notre Dame, it was called, uh, it was another church that was here, St. Etienne, St. Stephen. Um, Bishop Sully was the one who decided they needed to have some grand cathedral in Paris. Sorry, I'm trying to maneuver all this with one hand. Um, so he was the one who was behind it and put up most of the money to create Notre Dame. Of course, he didn't see it finished. He died before it was finished because it took almost 200 years. And we are very thankful for it. That's for sure, because she is a beauty. Oh, wish I'd go inside. A couple more years. <coughs> Less than three years. But he's kind of traced where a street was. So now I'll take you out here. They did, um, you have to show your past sanitaire here and then they checked your bag for security. Merci. They checked your bag, um, which was pretty common today. I went to the, uh, basically the diplomatic embassy, the minister, <coughs> ministry. And uh, that was awesome. We had to have a reservation for it. It was super, super cool. It was at the um, at Quai d'Orsay, really close to the Pont Alexander. It was the word I was trying to say there. I feel like I'm Peter Brady. Um, and uh, it was gorgeous inside. It's really, what's really awesome about the ones that you have to have a ticket for is they really control the numbers. So it was not busy at all. And I took a thousand pictures in there and I will share them all with you guys. Um, I will post some of them in my Instagram stories, but I wanted to write on them what they were and what you're looking at, but I didn't have enough time before I headed over here. I did buy a really cool book there. And also there was one room that I went into and I just about died because they had three tapestries <clears throat> and they were tapestries of three of Rubens paintings from the Medici cycle of Marie de Medici that we saw last weekend. So I was like, oh my God, I was really excited. So I took a bunch of pictures of those. One of the people asking me asked where I was from. And I told her the US and then she let me know that our uh, ambassador came over there. And I was like, that's great. I could hear this. But <laughs> I'm like, tell me the French people that gave you're not the American people. But <clears throat> that was nice. But it was really cool. They had this bathroom the queen's bathroom that was like a disco ball but like a gorgeous like the bathtub was covered in tiny silver tiles it looked like it was a very expensive and aged and beautiful pick they took them off of a disco ball and it was amazing and then they had um the king's bathroom it was just like that, but with gold, it was really amazing. I was quite excited. And so I uh, got some pictures of that. And then what was the king's and the queen's bedroom weren't used, are not used for that, obviously, anymore. So they just have like big tables in there for like meetings, but the bed is still in there. So it's like somebody, if somebody gets, you know, tired, do they get to uh, lay down? 
but they were gorgeous. So, oh, just so you know, so right now there's a huge trial going on. So this whole air from here out, all the way over to Pont Neuf, you really can't get into right now during the week. The trial goes until May. It is a trial for the uh, one gentleman that I believe, I think he's the only one that survived, um, that uh, was involved in the November 2015 terrorist attack. So he, um, the trial is going on. They built a special courthouse in here and it will, uh, they have over 300 lawyers because there's a lawyer basically for a ton, of, you know, like the families, the surviving members of the families, um, they all have lawyers. So they built like this special secure uh, courthouse in here for it. I guess uh, he has been screaming and yelling during court. So I guess it's been something to uh, see. Of course, they don't have cameras, but you can't get anywhere around here. <clears throat> you can't, usually a lot of times you can still walk, but then you can't even walk across here. So that of course is the courthouse. That beauty over there is of course, Saint Chapelle. <clears throat> There she is. I keep screenshotting these pictures. <laughs> but now that's the only spire, sadly, you see on the island when you look from the Pont des Arts. And here, I don't know how the reception would be here, but maybe I'll we'll have to go in here next month when we're close to the anniversary of uh, Marie Antoinette. So that little right down there, right over, right below where it says the Buffet du Palais, that little entrance right there is where Marie Antoinette walked up on that early morning of October 16th, walked up the stairs to put her in a cart and they slowly, very, very slowly, cruelly, slowly, took her <clears throat> across the river down to Rue de Rivoli, all the way to, and then to Rue saint Honoré and to the Place de la Concorde to, for head off. And what should have taken about 20 minutes took about three hours. So, and then you had her on a cart all by herself. <clears throat> And there's the story of Jacques-Louis David inside what is now the Hotel de Louvre, where they said he sketched this painting, or sketched this drawing of her that uh, the Louvre has. They don't have it on display. You can see it online. But uh, a lot of people don't think that that was actually him that did it, but whatever. a little bit more blue sky on this side. I don't think we've ever walked down here on one of our walks. Oh, some really hot air coming out of that vent. And this is the side of the conciergerie. And this is open window. This is where they have the, um, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the kitchen. If you haven't been here before, you definitely want to come. It's really cool. Right here in this um, section where they have the, what they have is the kitchen. There's these uh, fireplaces that you, you could stand inside. An NBA basketball player could stand inside and still have room for his head. It's really cool. You do go see her um, cell. Um, if I can't, I bet they don't have very good service in there, but I'll go in there and make a video for her. Um, 
this little marker. And here, I'll have to see what that's for. Um, there's a bunch of markers all over the city right now for the revolution. They added all these in and there's a special app you could have. And it will, there, the little markers are in different places um, that were important to the revolution. Um, <clears throat> but I will try to go in there and at least make a video because uh, her former cell that she had um, at the very end is now a chapel that was created. And the walls are painted like this gorgeous navy uh, royal blue. It has little silver tears painted all over it. And um, it has a couple paintings in there of her. I get a trial and a painting of her being led up the, led up the steps um, to out that walkway I showed. And <clears throat> it has a marble altar. And then it has the letter that she wrote her sister-in-law, Madame Elizabeth, who I did a podcast episode about, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a couple weeks ago when we did that whole series about Marie Antoinette's lady. And, oh, wait. Can't forget to find my birthday. And uh, so um, it's really sad and very moving in there. Here we are. 426. Look, it's a lovely evening. It's there's 80% chance of rain tomorrow, which is tomorrow. So <clears throat> not too bad. And we're gonna go. I don't think I don't think we've ever taken a walk into Pop Dauphine, have we? Maybe. It's a little bit um, busier now because the restaurants have uh, taken over out into the center. Uh, but during the week, um, during the week, it is blocked off. And so you have to prove that you are supposed to be here. So if you wanna come in here and between now and next May at the earliest, you have to have a reservation or proof that you live here or proof that for some reason you're coming here <clears throat> for them to let you in. Um, but as you can imagine, it's pretty tight security. They were supposed to have tours in here, um, but they canceled those this weekend too. So, so it says, do you know the, the you know what's funny? The French word for avocado and lawyer is the same avocado. But yeah, so there's like 300 members of this press, like 300 attorneys, family members. Um, but this is the back side of it. It's gorgeous. You've got the N up there, Napoleon an eagle, of course, and all those amazing allegories. <clears throat> and those fantastic lions. I love it back, I love the back hair. It's, I've never seen it open. I would love to be able to walk up there sometime. But it is beautiful tonight, it's perfect. I hope it's nice where you are. But I went today also. <clears throat> I walked up and saw the Arc de Triomphe and it's all wrapped. Um, it was the wrapping by Christo and Jean Claude, where um, some people have been getting, well, they've been getting upset for a lot of reasons, but <clears throat> it just keeps getting uh, attributed just to Christo. <clears throat> but it was something that they wanted to both do for more than 60 years. And um, she, but she died in 2009. He just died last year. 
So it was actually his nephew um, that followed through on it. That's a great place for a bike. It's actually his nephew that followed through putting it up uh, because he still wanted it to be done. So uh, they did it and it finished and it was officially opened yesterday. And it's pretty amazing. I made a little video I'll post, but I did a little live, a very short live from there that um, you can find on my Instagram, but I'll post the other one as well. And it was really cool. I got a little piece of it. You got like this little um, two inch by two inch. These guys are serious. I got a little two inch by two inch square, actually. There it is. In my bag, I brought it just in case. So it's like this little, so this is what it's made of. And it's like a, kind of reminds me of like a tarp fabric. So it's like, it's definitely like a plastic. And then it's painted silver, but when it hangs there, it has this very silverish blue tint to it. Um, and it's really gorgeous. It's really, really cool. A lot of people absolutely hate it. Uh, people online have been saying how horrible it is. And uh, it's a waste of money, but the country didn't pay for it. So it, um, and it's all protected and it's gonna be coming down. It's only there for a couple of weeks and then it comes down. So don't you think in this life, we have a few other things maybe we should be more outraged about? I don't know, especially in the US. <laughs> and, so it just seems kind of ridiculous that people are getting really mad about it. But so usually there's not all these seats out here filled with people. It's a little bit louder than normal, um, but that adds to the fun. I saw some people online saying, some Americans, somebody posted a picture and they were all saying, well, I wouldn't stay there no too loud, but. <laughs> Again, I think we have other things we need to worry about. But <clears throat> you don't have to stay here. It also costs you a fortune to stay in this little this little triangle. <clears throat> There's some shoes. Hey. <clears throat> this one. The restaurant, this restaurant, they actually have the one that's down on the water, the floating one on the water, and they just opened this one up here too. So here on um, Place Dauphine, which was created for the Dauphin, the Place is feminine, so that's why it's Place Dauphine. I always thought that was strange because it was made for the Dauphin. But on the end here, these are the only, the two buildings here on the end. I'll turn around when I get up here in this little thing. These two buildings are the only original one, oldest ones here. <clears throat> but see, you can see there's all the barricades, goes all the way across here during the week. <clears throat> and they're doing a bunch of work over here. <coughs> Henri Cat around him. Thankfully, getting rid of all those stupid blocks. So those are gone. Surprise, people aren't putting them on these fences, though. But I think they're probably taking them down as quickly as they possibly can. Should we walk down to the park? Probably a lot of people there. Bonjour, Ami. Sma? Trying to lift down my shirt, dirty old Henry. Awfully pretty day out. And Samaritan, of course. <clears throat> but yeah, see, they're putting in that. Uh, so this used to have um, metal fences. So now that it looks like they're gonna put in here what they did at Pont des Arts so that people will stop ruining it with those damn blocks. 
So we'll go down here to the end. There's probably quite a few people here, so we'll see where we could go. You could get um, some of the Beto Mousse from here. Otherwise, most of them you get at, uh, over at, uh, by the Eiffel Tower. I'm not looking closely at any of that stuff in case I see something with four little legs. So you can't usually, you can walk over here. Not right now. <coughs> and of course we have, oh, we have the boat for the Pompier. Who are out there last night working out. Oh, they're out there in their wetsuits, guys. It's getting darker earlier. It's staying darker later in the morning, just in the last four weeks since I've been here. So I still have six weeks to go. I'm very happy about. This next week's gonna be very busy. Bonjour, Pompier. And of course, my favorite bridge. Montezar. Look at the garbage in the bottles. Not nice. So when does it be kind of, I think it'd be kind of cool. I was sitting there last night on the side watching this guy who has one of the boats where he lives. <clears throat> Thinking it might be kind of cool to live on a houseboat. But I think when the water rises, it's not the best place to be. <clears throat> See, it's a whole bunch of people down at the end. But you can see <clears throat> the leaves, of course. Or should we go back the which way do we choose that? Should we go back the other way? We'll go back this way, you know, just in case we need another sighting of the the other side is just the not the prettiest bateau mouche. <clears throat> it's a nice day though. I'm glad that the rain is holding out for us. So I didn't get covered in rain. This is, of course, the Ver Gallon, the Square Ver Gallon, which is the nickname for our Henri Cat because he was uh, quite the ladies' man, <clears throat> even in his old age. They have a KFC bag that says KFC. <laughs> Uh, that would be a new. I had this one guy I dated that he was like, oh, he wanted to go to some fast food place. I was like, um, I don't eat that in the U.S. I'm definitely not going in Paris. <laughs> uh, no. I wish we could walk down here. I guess I could try to scale the side of that. <laughs> no. No way, I'd be too scared. Yeah, no. You see the Institut de France. That is the Monet. <clears throat> it is the mint, it's the Paris mint. And they also have a museum in there that just opened a couple years ago. And it is really incredibly interesting. They have like the whole process of how they make the, 
the coins and they still make coins there. They make the commemorative coins. If you go to any of the monuments or a lot of the souvenir shops, you see these very fancy, very shiny gold colored uh, coins. <clears throat> and they, you know, they'll make them for like the Louvre and um, the Sacre-Cœur and all of these different places. The first time I was here, I collected a bunch of them and now I have a bunch of them back in Portland and I don't know why I have them all, but I'll give them to my niece maybe. But they, uh, they print them here and they print a bunch of other commemorative coins. They're constantly making new ones. There was like Harry Potter ones, I think right now on the outside, they have signs for Harry Potter ones, <coughs> but they do, um, they have all of these really amazing, like how you make it. They show you um, the big dies. You have the big cast um, from commemorative coins going back to like, you know, Louis the Ninth. Um, you get to see all the different money for the different key for the different kings um, and uh, special commemorative ones that they made for like the wedding of, you know, Marie Antoinette and Louis the 16th. Um, it's really, really, really cool. And you should definitely go when you're here. It's really beautiful too. The side up here uh, on to the left on the side of the water is um, these gorgeous, huge, beautiful French rooms, you know, with the gold and chandeliers. And on the right is a very fancy restaurant. I want to say it's either Guy, Guy Savoy or Alain de Cos. I'm sorry, I can't remember. I think it's Guy Savoy. It's very, very fancy, very, very expensive. Um, but it's really, really interesting and hardly anybody goes there. It has a really cool courtyard in the middle of it. That's one of the original masks that were on the Pont Neuf. They are talking, I guess, of redoing it again, fixing it up. But most of the masks that are on it are not the original ones anymore, sadly. But there are quite a few of them. There's a few of them um, in the Musée des Arts Décoratifs. It's another amazing museum that's in the building, quote unquote, of the Louvre. <clears throat> it's on the Rue de Rivoli side. Um, there's talk of maybe someday moving it out because the Louvre need more space because they only have 35% of the, what they own on display. Over here, there's usually a, a plaque because the, uh, I think it was this, uh, Jacques Mornay, I think it was, for the temple, Templars, was burned over here. The Square de Vergalon. These are my favorite things to find. They're the oars. Not designed by Philippe Stark because it oars, get it? Because it's the Paris and it's oh, Jacques de Molay, 1314, March 11th. So he was burned here. Ticked off the king. What happens? It burned. It burned alive. So let's we'll try to go back up. Hopefully, I don't have a coughing attack for you. <clears throat> Usually, you have a different staircase. <clears throat> I don't know I feel one coming on. <clears throat> It feels like I swallow a piece of dust or something, or a rock. <laughs> Tell you one thing, six months ago right now, I would have not been able to get up two of those steps, much less all of them. But they have a thing that tells what they're doing. Bonjour, Henri. So when he, the original one <clears throat> is, was destroyed, but there's parts of him at the Musée Carnavalet, part of his front, um, the horse's leg, I think it was part of his shoe, Henri Cat, Henry IV. And then this one was redone <clears throat> and then later, was done in the 19th century. And then later when it was <coughs> taken 
found to be restored inside, they found a couple metal tubes and inside of them were a whole bunch of leaflets. Here's what they're doing. A whole bunch of letter, uh, leaflets that were bone apart. Here he is. So this is when Pont Neuf was really old and had all those stalls across it. And they would have stalls in these little uh, seating areas too. But they found um, all of these pamphlets, pamphlets by some guy that worked on it that was a Bonapartist against the Bourbons and the monarchy. So they shoved him inside there. And there was a bunch of coins, a whole bunch of stuff. 10 to 6. I love the lamps. There's Neptune and the Dauphin. How's that for a view? How's that for nice? The water is actually somewhat clear. I <clears throat> still don't think I would want to go in there. Yeah. What do you guys want to see next week? I will be with two words all week and even next Sunday morning. So I have to keep that in mind. I wish take me to the Orsay. I know Carol and Dawn would like that. Hey, look at the people. Last night I walked down here. I was kind of in a mood <laughs> and it was a big day. <clears throat> big anniversary if you saw what I posted yesterday. And so I was uh, determined to uh, jump out of my slump and enjoy the day and so I walked down here and of course <coughs> and of course I saw a seagull that kept circling over and swooping down in front of me so it made me smile and I thought okay okay pops I know and then I walked a few more steps and there was a guy sitting there wearing a dandy warhols t-shirt with um, that is the state uh, seal of Oregon. And um, I am friends with the dandies, especially Courtney, Taylor Taylor, the lead singer, because I used to do big events with them. And so that made me smile. And then I called Courtney, because he also loves Paris. And then he gave me a, uh, five minute lecture on what to do about my voice and that I needed to get off the phone and stop talking to people and uh, what I needed to go buy to make it better. I mean, I guess if he's a rock star and he sings on stage, oh, hey, he sings, sings on stage all the time. I guess I could probably, I think he's a pretty good authority of what to tell me to do. It's a bilingual Russian book. If you guys want me to grab that. <coughs> so, oh, you know who that is? You guys remember we did a podcast episode about her. Oh, the assassination of Henry the Fourth, the coronation of Charlemagne, oh, the murder of Etienne Marcel. I might have to come back here and buy all of these books. She is the great granddaughter of Miss Picot. I have a lovely chat with one of the Bucanese on the other side last week. And he sold me a set of books 
that says it was 175 euros for five of them, but he is missing one. So he gave them to me for 20 euros. And uh, they're about the history of Paris and they were printed in like 1830 something. They're really, really cool. They're all in French, of course. And then there was another book that he threw in and gave me, um, but he was really nice. And then he told me all the other guys I needed to come and see um, that had history of Paris books. So that is some of the best places to find some of those kind of books is at the sellers. Um, the book, big bookstore here in Paris have had, did sell a lot of used books, has closed, sadly. But they're going to reopen sort of at the end of the month over in um, um, Boulevard Saint-Denis. No pompiers. Sorry to say, guys. They're probably out for a run. Can't remember what time it was. About this time last night that I saw them out running. And they're all about 12 years old now, so. <laughs> They look like they're about 12. So there's the inside. Look at the door. The door is pretty amazing. They have a Napoleon exhibit going on right now. So I need to go and see that. They're closed tomorrow. Um, but since I am so close to here, I might come try to come down when I have a little time this week, which is not much. but I still have a million things I have not posted to share with you guys. And if you see my Instagram stories, which I need to be saving, um, I'm putting a ton of pictures up every night. Oh, the Beatles, this is, hey rocks, look at this. That was when they played the Olympia. That was, they played there before they came to America. And my friend, the Dandies play there. They play there again this February, but I don't think I will be here for that. So I'll be here in January. See, I have a problem with books. I also want this. Oh, this Jean-Paul Ben Mungo. I also want that. Some of these things are strange. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Daredevil thing's kind of cool with Eiffel Tower. They have a rule that they're all, they're supposed to sell a percentage of books. They could only sell a small percentage of uh, trinkets. But I kind of don't think that's withheld or upheld very much because look at these really cool things at the Tour de France. Oh, the dime. Oh, there's Messi. They play tonight. Harry. It's fun to watch PSG or Les Bleus, the French team, play while I'm here. <clears throat> well, the Taste of the Kings might need that. Maybe I could find that fourth book, the missing one. Oh, I Do you guys like book shopping with me? <laughs> the Dictionary of Ancient French. No. Ooh, put them out. That's good. Bonjour. Oui, merci. Mm -hmm. You guys see anything you need me to get? Mind you, the last thing I need to try to pack is yet another book, but six weeks to go. It's going to get a lot worse. So I'll take you down here to my favorite bridge and we'll say, I do. This is, look at it, that, look at that fun little table. Look at it, it's got a little dog. I mean, it's not the fanciest boat, but like I'd live there. 
you imagine waking up every morning and you're looking at the Pont des Arts and looking at the Louvre? <clears throat> yep, I'd be down with that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Dictionary historique of the streets of Paris. You know what's going to happen as soon as I get done with you guys? I'm coming back here. It's going to happen. So <laughs> here we are. Look, it's a beautiful evening. Beautiful evening in Paris. I'll go up here. I'll try to go up here. I might have to go and get myself a little Saint Germain script. That's what I really, I had one last night. And then I really wanted another one later. But Javon Contois did not have Saint Germain scripts. But what he did have last night was Mezcal for some reason. And so I had a little taste of mezcal, a very tiny taste. It wasn't as horrible as I remembered. I don't like it, <laughs> but it wasn't actually, it smelled stronger than it actually tastes. So it wasn't, it's not a little plaque. So it's quite busy, lots of people. So here we are. We made a big turnaround from one island all the way through up to here. Keep your fingers crossed that we don't get rain. So I'll leave you guys here. The view, this side doesn't look as promising in the sky, does it? Let's look this way. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. The rest of your Sunday, mine is towards the end. I'm going to go home early and rest. Rest this voice of mine. It is much better, though. It was yesterday. I don't think I would be able to do this or it would have just been videos. So thank you, Carol and Dawn and everybody that's here. I don't know, I probably missed some of the comments, but um, you might've seen my video the other day. I was very excited. They opened up that little entryway to pass through um, that I always take in the morning. It used to be to the right. So there's entryway, there's now a little bookstore. Well, inside the bookstore used to actually be the walkway. And they just opened it the other day. And of course, that same afternoon, I went in there the day it opened and found two books. One, all in French, about the history of the sixth, which is really cool. So I will leave you guys there. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I'm going to post a bunch of stuff in my Instagram stories, which also go onto my Facebook stories from the place I saw today. And I'll also post a video from the Arc de Triomphe. So you can see that um, it really is really cool and gorgeous in person. Um, and it was today it was really neat because it kind of matched the sky. So it was very cool. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, I guess here it looks, should I say hi? Hi. I have to go find somebody to get my, do my hair. Okay, I will see you guys all very soon.